Oh, landmines and jellyfish. Welcome back to Knives, I guess. Oh my god. I didn't expect to see you here. But, we just did another live stream doing Cardboard Slayer on eh, this Walmart Ozark Trail Knife. And we've done Cardboard Slayer on this before. However, on the last live stream when we went in on the uh, Shrade Golden Spike, um, I had mentioned that I went and reprofiled the edge down to 18 degrees before we started. I wanted to just get it good and sharp and really, really give it hell. Now, this thing took four hours of punishment and it was holding up surprisingly well. So I got to wondering because this is some old steel. It's old shrade. This thing is not buttoning, but you know, we've done 440 from the 1980s and we've done some other steels that should be comparable to this that did not perform this well. So the question comes up to me, was it that edge profile that I gave it? Because I mean, I did the whole thing reground to 18 degrees or was it the steel? So because I had that question and I had no other way to answer it, this thing got the edge reground to 18 degrees and we went in on it. Now let's take a look at what we got first. Now this thing has a pocket clip and it's tip up, which is the Lord's carry. Uh, you've got a flipper tab and an access lock. Let's flick the bean. Eh, stupid lag. And of course the access lock, it, it didn't work out of the box. Um, if this is your first time seeing this, I'll get the rant out of the way real fast. But uh, from the factory, pretty much all of these, the, the channel right here from the flipper tab that the access lock rides in was malformed to hell and back. I had spent about two hours taking it apart, hitting it with the grinder and putting it back together again before it started working right. Uh, even at five bucks, it's kind of unforgivable. Like, you could open the access lock and go for it as hard as you wanted, and it would stick right here and wouldn't open any further with the access lock pulled down. They really, really messed that up. So, couldn't really carry it and do a fair review because I had that much work into it. So, we did Cardboard Slayer, and uh, let's flick the bean. Eh. That, uh, that first run on Cardboard Slayer, it took an hour for this thing to dull out, like, catastrophically. Like, it was bad. So we figured steel's junk, whatever, we moved on with life. However, I figured because this burned out so fast, this was going to be the prime candidate to uh, reprofile down to 18 degrees and put the time in on it. And uh, I also did the, uh, the edge on this down to 18 degrees too. And you might be able to see it is a nice shiny, shiny edge right there. It's mirrored. You can just about see it on there. And I figured, you know, we're going to burn through this one and move on to this one because this is 8CR13 and it is a steel. Every knife we've done with 8CR lasted pretty much exactly two and a half hours. So this is going to be another good candidate. However, this thing ate up three hours of Cardboard Slayer. And it started showing its wear, but it wasn't catastrophic. Okay, that is a giant difference in performance right there. Now, I did strop the hell out of it at the end of the live stream like I always do. So this is going to give you a, an idea. This is almost the same edge that we started with. But we got some weird, really soft paper here. I'm not sure what this is, but it is quite soft. And, uh, like, it's almost as sharp as when we started. So, of course, we got the copy paper. Just because I like doing these cuts and they're hard to do under the camera. But yeah, so that cuts a lot quieter when I can hold the paper a little bit more conveniently. But this stuff right here, this card stock really, really shows the edge wear. And uh, of course, with a sharp edge, it can blaze right through it. Now, the edge damage got bad enough that when this part of the blade right here contacted this paper, it started tearing and kind of gave up on the cut. The edge was still serviceable, but it was definitely significantly worn. Now, one of the reasons I did this is because, you know, I am still learning things. And, you know, I'd seen online repeatedly where guys would say edge geometry is kind of the king of how your knife cuts and how the edge holds up. So I had like an intellectual understanding of that, but there was a, just a, a mental disconnect from it because I had never had my hands on it. And, you know, I don't learn nearly as well from reading as I do from getting my hands dirty. And so I figured going into it, and we had guessed maybe an hour and a half um, of performance out of this thing before it went dull. I was kind of guessing that hour because it's the same steel, you know, and it didn't seem like the uh, 18 degrees was off that far from how it came from the box. But, you know, this thing ran three hours, and it could have gone for an easy four and still been going through the cardboard all right. Like, the cardboard cuts were still decent. 
it was just showing its wear on that cardstock. And, uh, you know, that kind of blew me away. And I now have a big heart on for 18 degree edges. Um, if I was in a position where I wasn't carrying a different knife every week for review, and I wasn't burning through so many of them so fast, the ones that I did carry the most often would definitely be getting this edge. It took so much punishment, and it's not like I went easy on it. You know, I had a lot of cardboard that had a higher edge crush test rating than the rest of it. You know, we were getting into the 40-pound stuff and just pushing through it. Um, and instead of going with... So, like, if you have the cardboard like this, when you got the really hard-to-cut stuff and you're going straight across, it's a hard cut. But if you kick it diagonally, it cuts a lot easier. So, most of those cuts were just straight down at a 90 degree. And uh, eventually, it did start showing some wear, so it got canned off to the side a little bit, getting closer to 45 to cut a little bit easier. But I didn't go easy on it. And, uh, you know, I'm very, very happy I learned that. You know, I've said it before. I'm not an expert. I don't know everything. I'm learning about this stuff as I go. You know, half of this channel is me learning things that I find interesting, and the other half is checking out knives that, you know, the guys that watch these things regularly want to see. You know, the, you know the, a lot of the people watching this kind of want to see stuff 35 bucks and under that they can afford get carried, get tested, get beaten on, and see how they hold up. You know, and we have found a lot of great stuff even in the sub $20 range, um, you know, that that doesn't necessarily turn this into a miracle knife, but for $5, you know, if you've got some good sharpening equipment and you can put a good solid edge on it, this will do you just fine. I would recommend maybe the other Axis Lock from Holiday 2023 and not this one because literally every single one out of the factory was messed up. Like, they, they really got something wrong with this. I don't know if the quality control guy just left to deal with the fact that his wife was cheating on him with the same guy from the Gerber factory. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's, it was wild that they got that that bad. But, you know, it's, it's again, just putting that putting that 18 degree edge on there turned this into a completely different beast. You know, I am astounded by that. Like, I really did not expect that kind of performance out of this thing um, off of just that little bit of work. Now, granted... I spent the better part of 40 minutes on the WorkSharp Precision Adjust, um, getting this thing ground down, because, I mean, it, it really was a complete reprofile. Um, I went from that, uh, I think, 220 grit stone and just did the whole thing and kept going at it until it was dialed in and then went through the other stones. And on the first two or three stones, I would get one side done, flip it over, hit the other side, then flip it back over and go through two cycles to make sure I was really getting it, good, getting it in there good. And, uh, you know, if, you, if you're doing stuff like that, a little bit of Sharpie along this bevel, it's a game changer. It makes it so easy to see where you need work. So easy. Like, I was blown away. So, good sharpening equipment pays off. And that edge geometry, yeah, that is a huge difference. You know, like I said, I am so happy I learned that. That is some new input for me. And now that I have some hands-on experience, then I have some kind of frame of reference for when I see other similar stuff online. So now it's easier for me to learn a bit more about this as I go. You know, I, I got somewhere to start from. So, uh, you know, I wanted to share that experience. Just changing the grind on the edge made such a huge difference. And, I mean, it dramatically, dramatically exceeded my expectations. You know, there is a... A lot of truth to when guys say your edge geometry matters more than your steel in a lot of cases, and this is a prime example. Um, you know, so basically now when we do these cardboard slayers, we're either looking at it from the, uh, we're going to have to look at it from the factory edge. We're going to have to, because like if, if we had done this with like 9CR18 uh, like or D2 or something like that, we would have never gotten it worn down enough to really show significant edge wear. Like I'm glad I started here. That was the best idea I had relating to this, hands down. You know, if we'd have gone in on anything harder than this, um, even 8CR, it probably would have been like almost shaving sharp when we got done if these results are to be believed. So, you know, for those of y'all that haven't really had your hands on it, I can tell you from personal experience now, your edge grind and your edge geometry make far more of a difference than the blade steel does unless you're one of those people that's out there beating on them so hard that you have to have a super steel of some sort um again i'm blown away i'm really impressed and i'm really really happy i learned this like this is great news for me you know if i do hit the point where i'm carrying something long term again i know exactly what i need to do to make myself happy with the edge 
And like I said, 18 degrees is the sweet spot for me. That did fantastic. Um, you know, and again, that came from me not knowing what I was doing and asking people online. You know, the first time I used that work sharp, I sharpened it like 22 degrees. It was like cutting with a hatchet. So I asked some people online and averaged the answers I got out to 18 degrees. Um, so if you're sharpening yourself, if you got a fixed angle sharpener, by all means go nuts. Um, again, I'd recommend trying 18 degrees and seeing where that takes you. Um, if you don't have a, if you're freehand sharpening and you're doing it competently, you already know so much more than I do. There's no point in saying anything. So, uh, and also your strops for the love of God, make sure you can strop. Um, I will again refer to the diamond paste on your strop. My God, it is a game changer in, in itself, but, uh, yeah. Y'all have heard me talk about the uh, the straps and everything else so many times now, um, but I just like I said, I wanted to share that with you and share what I learned. And if you learned something from it, too great. Um, if you already knew this, feel free to feel superior because I just now figured it out. <laughs> but uh, all that being said, thanks for looking at my crap. Uh, subscribers, you guys are awesome. Y'all are still coming in. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Um, the winners for the 1K giveaway, I'm still working on getting your stuff mailed out. I dropped by the UPS store today and they want or yesterday and they wanted 70 American dollars to ship three packages inside the country. So uh, tomorrow or the day after they're going to USPS and seeing what they can do. Um, but yeah, comments, um, leave a little feedback. You know, if you know more than I do about the edge geometry stuff and all that, please enlighten me. Um, share with the audience. And uh, if you just learned something from this, feel free to let me know too. But all that being said, Y'all have a nice day.